In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an ornament that will end up looking like this once it's cut on the Glowforge. And we'll cover how to do what's called the knockout method using the Silhouette software. So I'm going to get this deleted and show you the steps that I took to get to this point. Um, the first thing you want to do is to create your last initial. In this instance, I was using K, the last name Kelly. And also, you can see over here, I've made a sticky note that has the fonts that I was using. I like to come over here to the left-hand panel and make a sticky note whenever I'm going to make multiple of an item because once you start welding your fonts, you won't be able to edit the text anymore. Sorry, I have a new laptop. You might notice that I'm using a Windows based instead of my Mac from previous videos. Okay, so the font that I was using for the large initial was Cambria. So I have my K, I'm going to go to the right hand panel, click on this to change my fonts. And I'll just type in Cambria, select it from the list. Oh, first of all, if you notice that your font's not changing, if it is in the cursor mode like this, it's not going to change your font. You will need to click off of it and make it look like this instead. So let's try that again. Cambria, and now when I select it, my font will change. And the last name, I was using the font flashback. So I'll type the last name that I want. And once again, click off of it so that it's in this edit mode. I'll type in flashback and select it from my list. And to show you what I'm talking about real quick, you can see that right now it's showing me that the font I'm using is called flashback. But if I were to weld this, which I'm going to want to do eventually, now that is not up here anymore. The text is actually not editable. And if you're going to come back and do this with another last name, it's often that you'll forget which fonts you were using. So a uh, tip is just to go ahead and create a sticky note that tells you the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and step back from welding that um, and continue on. So I want the K to be part of the rest of the last name. So I'm actually going to right click and hit ungroup and then move the K so that it touches the E. Now I've selected it all again and I will go ahead and hit weld now. So you can see that the letters are all connected and they're not just overlapping. And I want to make my last initial larger and if you're trying to use exact measurements you're going to notice here that it says 4.9 but you can tell that this box is much larger than the actual letter itself by counting the blocks you can see that the letter itself is not even to three inches um, so if you come across that you can always right click and say make compound path and that will bring your box down to a more accurate uh, outline of the letter. So now you can see it's about 2.79 and I'd say that's closer to being accurate size of the letter. So I'm going to make that larger and just kind of put my last name over here to see how it's looking, make any adjustments. I really just eyeball this to see what looks good to me. Um, I try not to get too many points of overlapping. So this L, I wouldn't really want it to be, I don't know, in this corner, I try to get it more cut out from the K. And also it helps to make it a color just to get a better idea of how it will look. And to me right now, this looks okay. I did notice uh, when I did this previously that this particular font during these little uh, connecting portions is quite thin once the wood is cut. So I'm going to go ahead and make it slightly larger by using an offset. So 
I go over here to the offset panel again, click on the star, and I'm going to want to create an offset around the outside of it. Um, for me, it's easier to go ahead and change the color back to uh, no color so that I can see how the offset lines up. So I'll just go back to the star and hit offset, and now I can see how that thickens up my letters. I'm just going to push the down arrow until I see that there's no uh, letters that are still connected to itself. Like you can see right here in this Y, I'm going to want more definition there. So I'll just cl keep clicking down until the Y separates from itself. And that looks like it'll do it right there. So I'll hit apply and then you can just simply drag away the inner part and you can tell that it has thickened up there. So now I'll make this portion a color again and see if I still like the way it looks. I think now that it's a little bit larger, I'm actually going to resize it to make it uh, an actual smaller size. And that looks okay to me. So I'll just delete my original smaller size here. And now we're going to do the portion that's called the knockout method. So if you ever need to do this again, that's what you'll look up if you're looking for other YouTube videos to apply a similar technique to something else. So you're going to want to click on your your last name and make a copy of it. So you can either do that with your keyboard by control C or right click and hit copy. And then go ahead and paste that. So now you have two copies of your last name. So get your first copy lined up on your last initial, however you want to place it. And once it looks good to you, go ahead and highlight all of it together, the larger initial and the last name. And then go over to the right hand panel and look for this icon. It's called the uh, modify panel and you'll want to use the subtract option. So this has essentially cut your last name out of the larger initial in the background. And actually I see here that it has this tiny little piece and I don't really want a tiny piece so I'm going to back up a little bit and move this E um, or this Kelly so that the E is not overlapping the, the big K like that. It's just really likely that you're going to lose that small portion once it's cut out. So I'm going to go through the process again, highlight everything, and hit subtract once again. Okay, so now we don't have any small portions left there, and this looks much better to me. So I'll hit right click and group it all together. So basically what you've done is cut Kelly out of your larger K initial and you can use your second copy to see how that lines up and it'll be perfect because you just made an exact copy of the same thing you cut out of the K. And now that that's done we can go ahead and create the circle portion that goes around the K um, and since you want a perfect circle it's easiest to go to this icon here which depending on whatever you clicked on last is how it will show up in your bar but just go and click on the circle and that'll be a perfect circle for you and drag that circle so that the edges of your K are overlapping with it and you can move around however you like until you get the look you want so I see this question asked a lot is how do I now make the K weld onto the circle? Well the circle right now is just a line. 
you have to make it into a shape first. And we're going to do that by clicking on the circle and creating an offset for it. So go back over to your right hand panel. The star again is your offset panel and click offset. And I just click the up button um, until I get it how I want. But it's actually easiest if you don't mind having a larger uh, circle rim if you just click up until all of the K fits within your rim. Um, you don't want any part of the K to be sticking out like that. So you can either make your rim larger or recenter your K so that it is within your circle. So now that you have your outer circle and your inner circle, you just want to click and highlight both of those, right click and say make compound path. So now this rim is noticed as a shape instead of just a line like when we only had one of them. And now from there you can select the whole design and right click and hit weld. And as you can see everything is now joined together. And we want to put the Kelly which is actually now showing up behind your design so if you'd rather um, you can click on that and use this top tool up here to bring it to the front. So now it's showing on top again. It doesn't really matter. It just makes it easier to see um, how it's overlaying with the K. And now I want to select everything and resize it, which is important that you put the Kelly back in here before you resize it because, of course, any changes just to this blue shape is going to affect how your pink name will fit back in there. So it's always best to go ahead and resize them together. And so I'll just put that back in there. And if you want to make fine adjustments, you can always use your keyboard arrows to move that up and down, left and right. So we'll select the whole thing. And I've been making these at about four to four and a half inches. So I'll probably put this one around 4.2. And also if you prefer you can put another circle here if you'd rather have a hole in your ornament. But I'm just going to use string and basically loop it around this uh, top portion of the ornament. So now that everything is the size I want it, I need to separate out the Kelly again so that they will cut separately. And now we'll save it as the file for sending it to the Glowforge. So file, save as, and make sure that you save it as an SVG. All right, and now we'll head over to the Glowforge app and get the design uploaded. Okay, in the Glowforge app, you'll hit the download button, find where you saved your design to, and hit open. And it will process the design and then upload it into the Glowforge space here. So my design is present but I still need to go put my material in the Glowforge and get it ready. So I'll just leave this on so that you can see how the, the workspace updates once the material is in there. Okay, now you can see that I have my proof grade draft board loaded in there. And I'm going to move this into an area that hopefully doesn't take up that much space because you never want to waste materials. So sometimes you get a little creative to stick it all on the same sheet. Okay, and again, make sure that your material is selected. Um, I've also done this with other materials that aren't proof grade, and it works fine. Everything is already set to cut. I'm just double checking that it's on the right settings. And now we'll hit the print button 
and head over to the Glowforge to hit the button on it and get this cut ready to go. This portion has been sped up to four times the normal speed and this cut took two minutes and 18 seconds to make. So I've removed them from the board and now you want to make sure that you don't lose any of your small parts of your letters in here. So just keep that in mind when you're removing the masking off of this portion. So I've removed the masking and punched out all of the portions that were the negative parts that we don't need anymore. So now we can just slide the last name. Sorry, it's a little hard to do with one hand, but you can just slide your last name into your letter there. And it fits pretty snugly. I've been adding a few little points of glue just to make sure. But before you join them together, I would definitely suggest uh, if you're going to paint them two different colors to paint them separately while they're two different pieces. Um, also, you want to look back at your original design so that you can find all the smaller pieces that are also portions of your K that you want to add back in. So at this point, I would go back at my silhouette program. So looking back here, you want to have the small portions of the blue area that belong to the K. So I found those and just inserted them in to my design. And this is what the final piece will look like. Obviously make sure that you paint all the colors correctly because all of your tiny little inserts, remember that you want those to be the same color as your K. And obviously always you can look back on your design here and see how that all works out. And to finish this off, I would just loop some string over on itself and pull it tight so that it will hang. Um, just to get a better idea of the size of this, this is how large it is fitting in my hand. So you may want to make it a little bit smaller so you can get more out of a piece of material because this is a pretty good size at 4.2 inches. And basically you can apply this to making any design that you want. Just remember that anything you want to put inside your circle to make those circles um, into a shape first by creating the two circles and making a compound path out of those. And anything that touches the rim of your circle, if you want to do snowflakes or a Christmas tree in here, any design that you want. Once you have your outside rim, then you can just overlap your design with the rim and hit weld. And that should work out for you. If you have any other questions, leave them below and I'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching.